<clears throat> All right. Sorry, everyone, we had a technical difficulty because we're using my phone instead of Mary's. Usually we use Mary's phone, and so we're gonna give everyone on Facebook just another moment to come back as we restarted the video. Let's see. Let's see it again. I deleted it, so it'll go, it should go away. <clears throat> Is it up on your phone, Dave? Yep. Yay! Okay, good. So we're coming back. All right. Let's just refresh and see if it's online so I can see everyone. And we'll, Sharif and I will keep, actually, it'll be me that who keeps. Yep, there we are. Okay. So we're back. All right. There are some people on, so that's good. So they're coming back. All right. So sorry, Facebook. And welcome everyone who's here. We're so happy to have you. So sorry. Um, that if you guys are watching online, it's a vertical image. It's not taking up the whole thing, but hey, it's okay. On your phone, it should look good. On a computer, it may look a little, you may have the black lines on the side, but it's not really a big deal. So Pastor Mary's not with us tonight, nor is she with us next week, but we're going to continue in the book of Ecclesiastes. And we're in chapter 7, both nights. We'll be doing verses 1 through 14 tonight. And then we'll be doing the remainder of chapter 7 um, next week. And so... Um, just to give you, um, before we open with prayer, because we're going to let everyone continue to sign in on Facebook, the title in the New Living Translation for this chapter is Wisdom for Life. And so in the first six books, uh, chapters, we saw that Solomon was really kind of in his own, like man-centered. He really wasn't centering his life on God. He was just centering his life on his own thoughts. And God was like an afterthought, and he was kind of battling that. Um, but now in chapter 7, which I think is perfect, because it, biblically it's the number of completion and perfection, Solomon now is centering his life on God and realizes wisdom is crucial, I mean, in how he moves forward in life. And so we'll be looking at that, um, but I thought this was interesting. Mayer had it titled, um, Wisdom for Perpetual Busyness. Perpetual busyness was what she titled life as, and I thought that was so cool, but other versions have, um, don't take anything for granted, the best in life, the value of practical wisdom, the contrast of wisdom and folly, and we've seen folly means foolishness in the past few chapters that we've looked at. And so, and then there's one that just said wisdom. I don't know if anyone has any other titles for this chapter that they want to share. Um, wisdom for life. Wisdom for life. Yeah. Jesse, what does yours say? Because you have a different version. Wisdom strengthens the wise. Wisdom strengthens the wise is what she said if you're online. And so, um, truly, God is, is wisdom, so we need that. So let's go ahead and join our hearts in prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together this evening and bringing us to your word. Your word is truth. It means everything for us in this world that is so temporal your word is eternal and so we just thank you for that we ask that your spirit be ever present and move through this place connect all of our hearts make us one in you jesus open our hearts to receive the message that you want to impart allow our ears to be spiritual ears that hear you and our eyes to see things that are beyond this world they're eternal in you Thank you so much for what you're going to do this evening. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, just a little intro into this um, chapter before we get started. So humanity is prone to rebel against God. We know that. We've seen that throughout this book. Um, we demand our own ways much of the time, right? We want to be selfish instead of selfless. Uh, we turn away from God, which ultimately means we're turning away from true wisdom. Not earthly wisdom of men, but the ultimate true wisdom. And so um, we're going to see that King Solomon learned the hard way. <laughs> we already saw that, actually, um, in previous chapters, because he rebelled against God's command that was not associated. And he 
was with lots of women who were, had other gods, and we saw that. And so now we're going to see this. We're going to begin to see this turn in how he truly feels and believes <laughs> this truth. Um, so we're going to get started with uh, verses one through four, and then we'll stop. And at any point in time, if any of you online have any questions, let me go ahead and just make sure. Yep, we got people on, so that's good. I'm going to expand. If you have questions or comments and you want to go ahead and um, write those in, you're about a minute behind us, but we'll go ahead and we'll be able to see that, um, and we'll get we'll get to you. So, chapter seven, wisdom for life. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. A good reputation is more valuable than costly perfume. And the day you die is better than the day you were born. Better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. After all, everyone dies. So the living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. A wise person thinks a lot about death, while a fool thinks only about having a good time. Great. Heavy, right? Yes. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but what I love about this is that Solomon, he contrasts two different things here, right? Um, two important days in the life of um, any human being, right? The day that we receive our name at birth and then the day that we die, right? So those are two important things. But the most important thing is, is the in-between time. So the day we receive our name at birth and the day we die, right? But he says... A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death is better than the day of birth, right? So uh, the life that we live in between the day that we receive our name and the day we die is what really speaks about the fragrance that we'll, that we'll be known for, right? What we'll be known for, what we'll be known for. And I think yeah. that's just so, like, important in the life of every believer. Like, what will you be known for, right? Um, there's this quote that I read. It says that in life, there's three names that you'll receive. The name that your parents give you the name that other people know you by, and the name that you acquire on your own, right? And that's just so true. The life that you live will speak for itself, and that's, that's what you'll be known by. Uh, in the Bible, you see in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, um, Jesus is at Simon the leper's house. Um, and there's a woman there that anoints his feet, and his disciples are getting very upset, and they're like, what is she doing? Why would she take this expensive oil and then break it at his feet? Um, and Jesus, he, he gives them, uh, he rebukes them, he talks to them, and he goes on to say that this woman will be known, as the gospel is preached, this woman will be known by what she did here. And that's the life that, because of that one moment, her name will be known because of that. Uh, but then you continue to read after that, I think that's like verse 13, verse 14 goes into Judas. And it talks about how he sold Jesus out for some, some silver. And that's what he's known by. So the takeaway from that is, yeah. what will you be known by? What will your fragrance be left as in that in that time? That I love that. Your... And um, Pastor Mary had shared this. First Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4 say this. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Because character, do we want to be remembered with the fragrance and, and godly character, or do we want to be remembered by what the package on the outside looks like? You know, because so it's, this is this is temporal. This fades, it goes away. The eternal fragrance is a godly one. Right. Yeah. But then so, he continues on uh, yeah. to verse two, and it says, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, since that is the end of all mankind and the living should take to heart. We'll go to three and four. Grief is better than laughter, for when we face, when, when a face is sad, a heart is may be glad. The heart of the wise in a house of mourning, but the, I'm sorry, the heart of the wise is in a house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. So Solomon here, he's challenging the people or the reader to look um, at death in a different perspective, right? Um, now, we understand this thing about death, and I'll, I'll transition to you to talk a little bit mm -hmm. more about the application of this, um, but he's not saying to constantly think about death, right? Because how can you ever enjoy right. life if you're always just thinking <laughs> about death? But death is a reality, right? And I think sometimes we can try to avoid or deny it, right. um, that it will ever happen, but Psalms chapter 90, uh, verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
right? So I think the takeaway is we understand the reality of that. Yeah. And what, what are we doing in our time for today? Right. Right? How am I living today? Um, and I think we're not fixated on that. But right. I understand that, you know, even reading this Psalms, teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom. Right. Right. Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. tomorrow. Right. So if you leave this earth right now, today is your last day, tonight's your last night, is everything settled? Not just here on earth, but is everything complete with him? Are you When you kneel before him, that's how I picture him. I don't know. I think my personality is going to run and like hug him and then just drop and kneel. <laughs> that's how he created me to be. But I, I picture that. Like, am I in the place with him to... Am I ready for that judgment? Because that's the ultimate judgment, right? It's with him. It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. So you're right, because I had read this, um, these verses to my sister earlier in the day, and she was like, wait a minute. That's hard for me because I love to be happy and live joyful. Like, what, is, what does this mean? Better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. Well, the funeral is really a celebration because glory is beyond that. Yes. Right? Eternal glory is there. So it doesn't mean that we are, yeah, to spend every moment fixating on, gosh, when am I dying? It just means, Jesus, is my heart right with you? Am I doing everything I can for you, for your to grow your kingdom? Right. right? I, I, I think, yeah. There was something else in here. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. Um. Tomorrow will be two weeks, you know, since we lost a family member. And it is in this time where if you keep your spiritual eyes open in your deepest trial, when you're struggling, if you keep it open, God connects things in the spirit realm. I mean, the heavenly realm is working always in conjunction with us. And so it, we either, we have a choice. You turn it off, you turn it on. What do you want? You know, so it's an amazing time because... Truly, if you can grieve and allow God to hold you in that place, he, he really wants to just peel back another layer of your oneness with him. Don't you think? I agree. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, did I cut you off? I no, no. Too long. You're All right. <laughs> it says, anyone have any questions about any of those verses or anything they want to add? No, you just explained three. The sorrow is better than laughter for sadness. Has a refining influence on us. I agree with your sister. When I first read that, mm -hmm. I just totally disagreed with it. And um, Joycey was like, kind of explained it to me like you have. But it was like, why would I want to be sorrowful when I could be happy? Yeah. Yeah. No, no and I'm going to share this quick with you. But, um, and most of you know this, in death 15 years ago, I didn't have a relationship with Christ firm enough to keep me with him. So what I did was I was so angry, I turned away. So I spent 10 years without him. It takes another death for Jesus to say, Jen, to woo me back. I come back, that's six years ago, five years ago, um, through that horrific time. That was a tragic death. It's a young person, sudden, it was horrific. But God used that moment to say, I'm here, you ready? If I don't choose to allow that door to remain open and move forward, this death two weeks ago, I couldn't talk to you about how awesome I know where she's at. I Never in my mind would, would I think that I could stop crying over lo physically losing such an important monarch in our family. But I can't stop smiling. And part of me thinks like, okay, Jesus, am I crazy? I actually had to ask my sister. I was like, like I've mourned, but not like in a place. I've been happier than sad. And that's what that means. He wants us to understand that sorrow is okay. But he, in the refining, please going to use even death, because death is the ultimate goal for all of us. And as Christians, if we're afraid of it, a non-believer is like, oh, I mean, she's scared. He's scared. Well, I don't want to die. Their God isn't, isn't mighty enough to hold them in this place. That's how I kind of see it. I don't know. But go ahead, Sharon. You wanted to say something. Well, I want to comment. What Cherie said earlier about the time you're born, mm -hmm. the time you die, but before is the dash. You remember that? Yeah, the, the poem. The dash. I'm yes. gonna. I'll post that yes. online. It'll be on the website and under this um, mm -hmm. in the comments. I'll post the dash again. It's awesome because yes. everything in between is really part of your journey that God put you on. Did you do it? What'd you do in between? 
I was thinking, yeah, that's Sorry. awesome. Yep. And also, what you were talking about, um, you never know when you're going to pass out. Yeah. Oh, my it's God. It's like in the New Testament, where the, well, in the old, too, is where the bride prepares for the groom. Yeah. And back in the early days of the Old Testament, the groom would come, the bride didn't know. It's usually in the night. Right. And she always had to be prepared. Prepared. Right. in her dress or be ready to jump in. Yeah. Always to be prepared for the group. That always the translates your heart Christ. to me. Your heart better be prepared yes. in oneness and connection with Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sharon. If you guys didn't hear online, she was talking about um, how the bride has to be prepared for her groom to come so that at night um, she's ready. So... Yes. Um, Kendra and Kayla, welcome. I saw you guys online. I hope we know we see you and we're so glad you're joining us. You ready to continue? Okay. I'm going to pick up with chapter, we're going to do chapters um, 5 through 10. Better to be criticized by a wise person than to be praised by a fool. A fool's laughter is quickly gone, like thorns crackling in a fire. This also is meaningless. Extortion turns wise people into fools, and bribes corrupt the heart. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Control your temper, for anger labels you a fool. Don't long for the good old days. This is not wise. Wow, so much. A lot. Yes. Uh, we'll <laughs> break it down. We'll break it down. We'll do five and six. Um, and we'll work our way down. Um, it says it's better to listen to the rebuke from a wise person than to listen to the songs of fools. For like the crackling of burning thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of the fool which too is futile. So he's he's comparing the praises of fools to the crackling sounds of, of burning thorns, right? Um, now, if you ever burned any thorns before, you hear that they make a lot of sounds. But like as you investigate and get closer, <laughs> like it doesn't really last very long. It's very right. quick. Um, and I think in the same way, he's saying that's what it's like listening to a fool. Yeah. Like, they really don't have anything to offer. It's no mm -hmm. fruit, no value. Yeah. Um, but it takes investigation, getting it a little bit closer to see, like, oh, they're making a lot of noise, right. but nothing's really happening. Right. Um, and I think that the question um, that's posed is that that poses uh, when you think about that is, do you understand like what a fool sounds like? Because if you don't, then you're going right. to be tricked into thinking, well, that actually does sound wise, but really, yeah. it's foolish. Yeah, and, and really important for those of you who believe we're living in end times, um, what does the enemy come posed as, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, and he sounds like Jesus. And we're going to, the only way to differentiate between is to be rooted in the word, to understand that that's a fool. Mm -hmm. So um, I think to me, I don't know, it speaks to that point too. I agree. Yeah. But he also talks about, uh, just go back to verse 5, it says, it's better to listen to rebuke from a wise person than to listen to the song of a fool. Mm -hmm. um, to take a rebuke and correction um, reminds me of Proverbs 27, 6. The, enemy, the kisses of an enemy may be profuse, but the faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yeah. Right? So, like, who do we have in our lives that are willing to correct us and rebuke us and let us know that, like, right. you know, this is this is not the right path. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. And and oftentimes we're offended, right, when it happens. But then when you can take a step back and apply it to the word or apply the word to it, then you realize, okay, maybe that's an act, that, that correction is what I needed. Mm -hmm. Our our human flesh wants to, like, get offended and, ah, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, well, wait, why don't I like that? Where's Christ in this? And then, you know, it's easy to see. So, yeah, I love that. Proverbs 27, 6. Love it. What about extortion turns wise people into fools and bribes corrupt the heart? Right. Um, when I read that, I was immediately thought, like, take caution um, when you're trying to take the easy route in life. Mm, good you know? one. Because when you think of extortion, when you think of bribery, like, those are two easy things to, like, try to get whatever you want in life. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the easy way of getting it. Um, so be cautious of trying to take the easy way of trying to get whatever you want in life. Mm -hmm. But also, um, because what that really does is it takes your heart, it takes the heart of the wise and makes it foolish. Yeah. Um, and it feeds our corrupt nature. 
or what we used yeah. to be. Um, and that's not who we are anymore. Right. And once that door's open, the little foxes are what spoil the vine. We know that. And so if you're living in that place, it's just going to continue to fester. I always say um, hackers, like if hackers put to use like their skills for good, oh, they'd be admit, like we, it would be amazing. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I think of that. I don't know why, but it's, it's like such a game and there's no end and there's no reward. And that's how life is without Christ. It's just constantly trying to plug, uh, you know, move ahead, move ahead, and you're just exhausted because you're not really doing the right thing. So, yeah, yeah I like that. And then he goes to verse 8, and it says, The end of a matter is better than its, than its beginning. A patient spirit is better than a proud spirit, mm -hmm. right? So if you live according to God's wisdom, I love this so much, um, it begins to change your mindset, right? Because if God is at the beginning of a thing, then it, it's, it's destined to turn out very well, no matter how you start. Yeah. Right? If God is at the beginning of it, Romans uh, eight twenty eight says, "All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to His purpose." So no matter how a thing starts, it may start very rough, very right. bumpy, but if God is in it at the beginning, don't worry. At the end, it has to work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called. And sometimes we don't see that. Right. We don't it because it's for the good of all who believe and are called mm -hmm. to His purpose. So maybe. You think like, oh, what is going on right here for me right now? But it's not about you. It's how he's using it for others. And sometimes we don't even, I love when he gets us a glimpse into something. We can be like, what? Because it's right. like literally so small, but you know so the plan true. had to be so much grander than that. And you're like, thanks. Okay, I can keep going. But we don't always get that affirming, retrospective like insight because it's, it's his plan. So we just got to trust that we're, we're moving in the right direction. Right. And then he continues on. He says, but in the, in the same verse, he says, a patient spirit is better than a proud spirit. And talking about patience, um, it's better to patiently wait on the Lord than yeah. trying to do something in your own strength. Which we um, do all the time. Which we do all the time. <laughs> we try to do things in our yeah. own strength. And when you patiently wait on the Lord, the results are so much better. Yeah. Uh, trying to do it in your own strength, you just get wore out, tired, and you're trying to figure out, why, why can't I accomplish this? Right. Well, because you do it in your own strength. You know? Yeah. So I think it's better just to patiently wait on the Lord. And, and see the results that he has better than trying to do it in our own church. Yeah, 40 years in the wilderness, <laughs> just walking around. Yeah. And control your temper, for anger labels you a fool. I mean, how often, and I'll speak for my own self, it, it comes out now, and as it's exiting, I'm like, what are you doing? Which is such a blessing, because before, it wouldn't have even been a thought in that moment. You know, so I always praise the Lord. If I can catch it then, if I can catch, if he, if he catches it before, I'm so grateful. But when it, because I'm not perfect and it happens still, I hate that it happens um, less. But, you know, when it's happening, I'm like, what? And so that's the Lord because it's only fools argue. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, to, in, in Matthew 5, we're, we're taught to, to love the unlovable, to not argue, to have patience, and to bless those who curse you. Right. So why are we, we are not to curse back. So, um, yeah, I just had to confess that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I think one thing happens, I think in this chaotic world mm. that we live in today, and I've seen a slower world yeah. in my lifetime, um, people don't, what we should really do is think before we speak or act. And I think that's hard in today's world. Yeah. The enemy has conditioned us to be right. instant gratification. Everything's instant. And if it's not, it's your fault. I'm mad at you. Why am I not getting this? Why am I not? And so it's a real, it's a conditioning that he's done, I believe, to prepare those who are unbelievers or weary believers for end time so he can snatch them up. But I believe if we can stay rooted and patient and allow it to that's a place of refinement always in me um and i love that god does that because it's yeah it's difficult definitely joyce i love that you said that if any of you online couldn't hear her she said um in her lifetime she's seen a change in pace of the world and how it used to be so much different than it is today and and that pace has caused an impatience in people so yeah i agree with you did we catch on? Oh, there's one more, right? Yeah, we'll get to 10. Okay. Um, but I think, like, the takeaway in both of these, like, scriptures is just don't take shortcuts in life. Yeah. And I think that's so hard at times. 
Yeah. You know, because it's like you see it easy way, and you're like, oh man, like I can definitely just do it that way. Yeah. And get it over with. But like patiently, patiently waiting on the Lord. It's a commitment. Um, it is. He, our commitments mm -hmm. are huge with Him. Mm -hmm. um, when we make a commitment, we have to stick to it. Mm -hmm. The smallest thing to the largest thing, and how many times we're like, man. Bad. I'm not gonna do that but you don't really if you're living in the spirit and asking the spirit to guide everything that you're doing how can you say you don't want to do that now right because truly it's and that sometimes messes with me it could be the smallest little thing like oh, okay Jesus I'm doing it <laughs> so um so yeah I think commitment I always think that's such a huge word so true and then even in like waiting on the Lord I always remind myself of Isaiah chapter 40 it says this but those who wait on the Lord shall the Lord shall renew your strength they will mount up on wings like eagles. They shall mm -hmm. run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah. And like that, that lets me know when I'm the different. I can tell when I'm trying to do something in my own strength yeah. and when I'm waiting on the Lord and letting Him give me strength to do so. Yeah. If I'm doing it in my own strength, I'm wore out. I'm tired, and I'm trying to figure out, oh Lord, like how am I going to do this? How am I going to try to figure this yeah. out? Like, why is this such a burden? But like the Lord said, He will renew your strength. Agreed. Right? Yeah. And I love that so much. So just know that if God is at the beginning of a thing. He will definitely see you through to the end and to completion. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect verse to connect back to the first few verses where mm -hmm. it talks about death and sorrow, um, because truly He's going to see you through even the the hardest place within mm -hmm. your earthly journey, which typically for a lot of people is death. So, yeah, I love Amen. that verse ten. Verse ten. Don't long for the good old days. This is not wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like when life gets difficult, sometimes we can. Want to reminisce back to uh, the good old days, but I read something that was so interesting. It says when you reminisce back to the good old days, it's usually uh, bad memories and a lot of imagination. Because ah, um, so during true. that time, like it probably really wasn't that good because uh, you were complaining <laughs> about you know, that is so what you true, were right? Before. Yeah. Um, but you have to right. look past that because it's just it's a delusion. Yeah. That's a delusion of like the good old days. And um, that I think is is a, a great enemy tactic. Yes. Right, like that's such a. I didn't. I just now. I'm thinking like the mm -hmm. enemy's clever in in wanting us to wish. Man, I wish it could be what it was, or mm -hmm. I can't wait till it's it is what you know. He really doesn't allow us to enjoy the moment that we're in because God. Back to the Romans eight twenty eight. He's gonna use it all for good. So if you're in a bad place, he wants to still use it. So mm -hmm. let him use it. Let him teach you in that place. Mm -hmm. and and I think it's important sense. to understand that both are necessary, our past yeah. and our future, um, but we can't dwell on them. Right. Like you can't just sit there and think about it. We got to focus yeah. on today, because you can get paralyzed by just thinking about, oh man, like how, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to wear tomorrow? Well, Jesus right. spoke about that. He said, yes. don't worry about what you're going to wear or eat tomorrow. He said, focus on today. Today has its own troubles. Yeah, I had to um, drop the fact that in business for years, mm -hmm. one of my qualities was that I was futuristic, yes. and I was like, oh my gosh. Once I started rooting myself here, I was like, wow, I need to let that go. Like I need to not. I need to enjoy where I'm at now and live for today and allow God to work here. Mm -hmm. And and then work tomorrow will be tomorrow, you mm -hmm. know, because I would just be planning. Not that you don't, don't plan. Obviously, right. there's a, you know, Jesus, you know, has this planning certain things. But I think longing for that and not, you miss things, places he wants you to be and places he called you to, mm -hmm. people he called you to serve. So, Any questions? Yeah. yeah, anyone want to? Yeah, I like what you said about not dwelling on the past. We all tend to rewrite history. history. We tend to rewrite our own history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'll share for online. Um, Sharon just said she it, she likes um, not dwelling on the past or past because we all want to rewrite history and and live in that place. Yeah. I I agree. All right. You ready to pick up? And yeah. Move on a little bit. All right. We're gonna um, look at the next two verses. Um, 11 and 12. Wisdom is even better when you have money. Both are a benefit as you go through life. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything, but only wisdom can save your life. So, that is so true. Um, see, the thing about money is um, it'll fade away. Yeah, it'll it's be not gone. permanent. But wisdom from the Lord will last forever um, if you're obedient to it. Or you'll just become foolish um, and having wisdom from the Lord and money you'll know how to acquire wealth and how to properly use it yeah but without it you'll squander it and I think that's, that's just so like that's I think true. most people like face that issue in life um, not having wisdom but having wealth 
yeah. and not knowing how to properly use it or how to properly acquire it because they don't have enough nooks and crannies around. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And this is coming from someone who had, I mean, great wealth. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a king. So um, it's great to hear someone understand that. Sure, it's great to have, it's <laughs> it's good to have money. It's good to have both, but the only lasting thing is is going to be wisdom, because ultimately. <laughs> He realizes his life here is temporal, but his life beyond the physical realm is eternal. And so we know that. And so that's ultimately our wealth. Um, a lot of people teach on the prosperity gospel. And for me, it's a spiritual prosperity. The only way we prosper in this life, regardless of how much money you have, the only thing that truly you can prosper for eternity is your spirit. That's it. Your spiritual connection with the Lord, that's it. So, yeah. Um, on to the next one. Yeah, I love uh, verse 12. Because wisdom is a protection as silver is protection. But the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of its owner. Um, and just the similarity between wisdom and what mm -hmm. happens when we obey wisdom. Yeah. Um, the wisdom that God gives us in his word, if you're obedient to that, the results of that. Um, I always say that, like, obedience reveals, like, your commitment. Yeah. Even into like God's word, like He gives us wisdom in His word. If we're obedient to that, that shows how committed we are to Christ. But if we're that's not, true. then we're just being foolish. Yeah, we're not really following. That's yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love that. Anyone else have any comments about it or questions? Let's see how all mine is doing here. I neglected them. Okay, you guys are good. Hi, Lisa. It's good to have you. I saw you pop in. She waved. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and, and read the last two verses. Accept the way God does things, for who can straighten what he has made crooked? Enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, realize that both come from God. Remember that nothing is certain in this life. I love that so much. We'll, we'll go 13 first, okay. right? Consider the work of God for who can straighten what he has made crooked, right? Um, I like how the, uh, the Living Bible puts it. It says, see the way God does things and fall in line, right? Um, most of us like to fight or want to change what, what God is doing. Um, now, I think you got to be careful with this because you can fall into fatalism and you would think, oh, you know, whatever happens in life happens, it's already been predetermined, so right. that's what happens. No, but I think what Solomon is saying here is, no, you have to yield to the Lord. Yeah. I think because sometimes when we walk this life, we, we try, oh, God, I don't want to do that. Right. Like, no, yield to the Lord and allow him to, to lead you and guide you right. and give you wisdom on how to Agreed. follow his path. I agree. Yeah. Um, because truly, if we, okay, look at, the, accept the way God does things for who can straighten what he has made crooked. Right. Right. So sometimes he calls us to places where it feels hard. Right, where we know he's calling us there, but we fight, we fight, we fight. If it's destined, if he wants that for our lives, he's going to continue to move things, and ultimately, we make things sometimes worse mm -hmm. in fighting. I mean, truly, we make our, our our situation worse. So we have to accept everything that he places before us. Right, and it reminds me of Ecclesiastes three eleven. Um, we'll turn, says, wait, let's no, turn. We'll, we'll turn, turn back to here. Okay. It says. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Right? So if God has made something crooked, he's more than able to make it straight. But right. in the same way, if he's made it crooked, it's still beautiful. Yeah. We just have reason. to learn how to change our perspective that, okay, this is crooked. Maybe this is not going well. Maybe this is not working True. out. But it's still beautiful because God can still use it. I develop the spirits, the fruit of the spirit within ourselves right. to see it for what it, that is mm -hmm. so true. Uh, sometimes we want, we know what we want, mm -hmm. but we in knowing that we stifle what he wants for us right. because we're 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 trying to move ahead of mm -hmm. that being futuristic. Is what I call that. I think it's just <laughs> easy to, I mean, to think of today is today and know that. <laughs> When I think that God has the full plan, he knows the path, he knows the plan, he knows everything that's going to happen, so don't worry about it, just let just let him lead you. Yeah. Because if you're walking with God, then you're walking in the right direction. Yeah. It's right. when we try to fight it and walk in our own little path that yeah. we get, you know, 
So just when I realized in my mind that, you know, he already knows where I'm going today. He already knows who I'm going to meet, who I'm going to talk to, who I'm going to. Yeah. So I just need to listen for and, and just follow. Yeah. Sometimes it's harder. Sometimes I just have to say, Jesus, where are you? And just, you know, get right. back on. But he knows the plan. Mm -hmm. It's like he's got the map. Agreed. Why would I not want to follow the map? <laughs> and oftentimes I think when we are on the path, we know and we feel that spirit movement. So when we take a step off, because we're human and it happens, you also know that. It's like I was talking about earlier with, with the arguing. As soon as a, the word, it's some, oftentimes it's the thought that I can, re, you know, give to him and release in that moment. But if the word comes out, I know it's happening and I'm not on that path. You know what I mean? So I think re repentance and correction is a huge thing in staying committed and mm -hmm. obedient because um, we're, we're such planners sometimes we plan our own day I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I'm going to do this and then right. when it gets out of track you're all, all out of kilter but right. <laughs> you know what that wasn't the track to begin with you just right. have to follow and let go of the things that I wanted for the day and just right. move with what God is because he might have had and he had, does have something much better yeah so. I used to be a little more of an aggressive driver and we're like <laughs> oh, on the road and now I'm like I'm probably avoiding something that you don't want. Like, it's so odd how my mindset's different in that place. And accepting something so small as that mm -hmm. um, to not disrupt my peace in the Lord for the day. Right. Because, what I mean, five extra minutes, well, I probably would have could have killed someone or done something. You know, so I like to see, I, I like that you're saying every piece of the day. Kind of like that driver on the road that gets really, really mm -hmm. aggressive and rage. he's running in and out, you know, and all of a sudden there's that light and he's just one car ahead. It just happened to us like, yesterday, you know Corpse. I said to him, look, he's right there. He cut us off twice. I was like, he's right next to So all that <laughs> worry and that frustration and going in and out of yeah, traffic, he's one there. car ahead. It's so <laughs> true. It's so true. <laughs> and you know, I think sometimes the <clears throat> the bad things that happen to us or whatever problems we have, that's where he's teaching us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's where we learn the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you pay attention and do some thinking about the bad times in your life, yeah. there's usually a lesson there. Yeah. yeah. If you're willing. If you're willing, mm -hmm. that is true. You have to... Yeah, I remember um, Maria, my aunt, saying, you cannot close your eyes in the midst of a trial. You have to keep mm -hmm. them open. And how that translates to my heart now is allow your spiritual eyes to remain open for the work that Christ wants to do in this moment. Mm -hmm. Because truly, it's during those, those trials where we're clinging to him. Mm -hmm. Ironically, we should have been clinging that hard the whole time before the mountaintop experiences but we, we find ourselves desperately needing him and so it's it's a great place for him to truly open our spiritual eyes mm -hmm. to see more of him to be more committed and more obedient to what his plan is and to allow him to to heal us to allow him to work in our lives so right and i think even in that like sometimes we hear trials and we say oh man like these are just like dark and like right. bad times but the bible says count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds right yeah and i think sometimes we find our joy in circumstances. So if I'm having a great day, then this is I'm at the top of the mountain. If I'm having a bad day, then I'm I'm in my low and it's just oh. right. But when I find my joy in the Lord and I keep it constant in that, I will always right. have joy no matter what I face because He's the, He provides the joy. Right? Yeah. If I find it in my circumstances, it'll always change. But God is always constant; He never changes. It's so true. And uh, speaking of Maria, I'm going to bring up another example because mm -hmm. Peggy, you'll enjoy this. So at our uh, the funeral last week of her mom. She took her shoes off at the end while cleaning, and she did something. It must have done like a little dance or jig or something huh. afterwards. And she goes, oh, gosh, was that like maybe disrespectful? And I'm like, are you crazy? It's the joy of the Lord, like <laughs> rising up in you. If you can dance after your mom's funeral and it was a celebration of her life, you truly, God has worked such a miracle. That is a miracle in people mm -hmm. to be able, it does, it's not a dishonoring place for the person, the person's in glory it's yeah. such a beautiful miracle to be able to say i loved th that i was loved by them mm -hmm. i love that jesus allowed me to love them that love is eternal and not going anywhere so why not just dance right so yeah because uh, joy in all circumstances yes yes uh, and so where were we at 14 14 enjoy prosperity while you can but when hard times strike realize that both come from god Remember that nothing is certain in this life. 
And you talked about this earlier, that yeah. both things, all things, come from God. Right. Um, and the only certainty that we do have, for me, even though, remember, nothing is certain in this life, but everything is certain in eternal life, because we know Christ. And so this life is, you know, it's seriously like a blink of an eye when you think about it. it. Is. Yeah. I always say, if I, you know, if I live as long as my grandmother, I'm halfway done. Like, I have a lot of work to do. Like, there's a lot more kingdom work I have left to do. Like, oh my gosh, I, I wasted half my life. What did I do? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, but, um, but truly, it, this life, is, is there's nothing certain other than Christ. So we have to share that, that truth with others. Yeah, that is so true. Um, I was just telling someone last week, I said, to know Christ is the most important thing that you could ever mm -hmm. do in your life, to know him. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 7. Um, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, on that day, many will say, um, haven't we cast out demons in your name? Haven't we done? Mm. And he goes to saying, like, haven't we done all these things in your name? And he says, uh, yes. He says, but he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you. Right. Um, and that word know is just to be intimate. Like, the word in the Greek means to be intimate. Like, yeah. how a husband knows his wife. Like, that's right. what it means. Yes. Uh, to be known by God and to know God is the most important thing you could ever do before you even try to do the works of God. Yeah. To know him. To know him. Mm -hmm. it, circling back to the, what I shared with you, about the different deaths. Don't think the first death 15 years ago, I didn't sit in the chapel of the hospital and on my knees prayed, but I was, I had a religious aspect of Jesus and of God. I didn't have a relationship. I didn't know him and I'm, I'm growing and I always, there's things every day that I learn mm -hmm. about him and him in my life and him and through others. And, um, but truly to know him means you will not depart from him. Right. You won't. You won't. You'll, he, he's going to hold you, and you're going to cling to him. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know him, well, then that's a different story because the enemy is clever and sly and tries to move in and destroy the joy that you have and peace that you have with the Lord. <clears throat> so, yeah. But back uh, yeah. to this verse here. I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Um, it says, "In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in, in the day of adversity, consider God has made one as well as the other, so that no one can discover anything that will come after him." So the thing about wisdom, it will change your perspective that in whatever situation that I'm facing, mm -hmm. like God is there with me. Yeah. And not only that, um, you, you have to be able to accept either, like whether I'm prosperous, whether I have or whether I don't have. Go to yeah. Philippians chapter four uh, really quickly. Paul, um, he carries this same mindset. This is a very popular verse. All right, we're going to go. Philippians four. You guys want to start at verse 11. Philippians 4, and we're starting at 11, right? Verse 11. You want me to read? Yeah, you can read. Yeah. Through what? Uh, just down to verse 13. Okay. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Right. So I look Paul, at that verse every day. Right. <laughs> Paul, he carries the same mindset. Of yeah. Whether I have, I don't have. Yeah. Like I know how to be content in that because Christ gives me the strength to do that. Yeah. Right. Anything outside of that won't work, but Christ has given me the strength to understand. And how. he really knows both. Truly. Right. He walked in both situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even Job, he carries the same mm -hmm. mindset. You don't have to turn there, but it's, he says. What shall we, um, what, shall we receive God, um, good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive trouble, right? Yeah. So being able to take both, because both come from the Lord. So, you know, when Job lost everything, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he took both, and everyone, his wife said, curse the Lord, and just, let's just die. Yeah. You know, but he said, no, like, shall we just, like, accept all the good things that God is doing, and not just, I think both of those bring a balance to our life yeah. as believers. And then, you know? and because he stays committed and mm -hmm. fully obedient in the pit of hell, mm -hmm. lost his whole family, lost his home, his health was destroyed. Mm -hmm. God still blesses him abundantly after the fact. I mean, right. because he stays in that place. He allows the enemy mm -hmm. to do everything but kill Job, but he still stays. Job does not <clears throat> waver in his faith. Mm -hmm. um, 
you had a question? When we did Job, I had a hard <clears throat> time. It is hard. Mm -hmm. um, believing that God would allow Satan to have that much control over him for such a long period of time. And um, I, I remember one night when Mary was about to start, start the program, she said, there's something I want you all to know. Is that Joyce is here because she loves me, not because she <laughs> likes studying about Job. It's so true. <laughs> but you it know, takes a long time to get to the. <laughs> when you, no matter what we're studying, I have found that every book in the Bible goes both ways, and in the end, everything is, is working in God's way if you listen. Yes. Yeah. It's just like our life, Joyce. It goes both ways. I but know. in the end, when we're with him, if we've listened, but I then... Had that, I had a hard time recognizing that. I did with too, with Job. I did, I did too. It's Because it's a long time in such agony. Right. Um, but the beauty is, Job is a great lesson because mm -hmm. we all face all those things. Mm -hmm. Truly. If it's not us, all of us face family dying. I mean, maybe not all at one time like Job, but, um, and some people do. Some people's family have horrific accidents and, and their whole family, except that they're the only one left. Um, we all face health issues. If it's not us, it's someone we love dearly. We face those things. Um, and we face possession. How many of you have gone through times where your, your prosperity in financial is great and then bam, it's, it's terrible. It, we face that too. And so I think Job's such a great lesson that if he can hold on to his faith in the midst of all of it happening all at once, so can we in the midst it of... It was a good lesson for me. Yeah, me too. I refer to it all the time, Joyce. I, I love it. Um, yeah, I went to read because Christina um, had mentioned something, sorry, a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not sure how... To, I'm not sure how to feel after last year. It took me so long, even though I knew he was in a better place to get where I am now. So um, Christina lost her spouse and then COVID happened. And so then was in a place of really almost isolation, even though she has family because we were all homebound um, and had health issues arise. And so um, truly, it's we just got done talking about Job, Christina, and I think there's no coincidences in life. I think everything's divinely appointed. And um, all of us in, in this family and your brothers and sisters have prayed through all of that because it is a hard time because you had a lot of stuff. But I, I don't think that's a coincidence of the moment and the timing to show that connection um, of Job and you because you really did have a lot of challenges. Um, but I believe that I see Christ through you all the time. Um, and I love that health things have been great for you. I love that um, your son and your grandkids, the connection you have with your family. And so um, when we pray tonight, I'm going to pray a special prayer for Christina too. Um, yeah, we love you. I would say one thing cautioning while we're talking about Job yeah. is never, ever ask God to give you the patience of Job. <laughs> because I I did that and I suffered for quite a few years learning patience and it was terrible. That but I can it. honestly say I have them now. <laughs> but it was I almost wanted to you. say it wasn't worth it. Wow. But it was, you know. But I, I have found through my life that all of those troubling times were really the best times in my life because that's when God put me flat on my face. Totally dependent on him. Yeah. And one of those especially is when I had my car accident and I had neck surgery and back surgery within a year. And it's like he really does. And I know your mom knows <laughs> perfectly well yeah. what, you know, God can do to help you through those difficult times. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important um, to stay connected with one another, with believers, um, because those times are so challenging that um, your family, because truly we're a family, mm -hmm. doesn't let you go. Um, and so 
I think that was another thing for myself I was missing. I didn't have a, a, a spiritual family. We all were family, and our family was in different places spiritually. Um, and it was easier to, to just turn. And I think your closest family doesn't realize some things. You can hide things from them. Um, but your spiritual family understands. The body of Christ understands. If you're not present somewhere, you're missing, something's going on, you know, holding one another accountable to stay obedient because we know where God's calling each other. I mean, we see it in one another. I think that's important. So, I don't know, that was just a side note. I didn't really plan to talk about that, but. Hi, Tammy. Sorry, Tammy's on. <laughs> she says, hello, everyone. I'll give Joyce a hug for you after we finish, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, does anyone have any questions? Do you have anything else? Did I no, cut I you off? Sure you no, I did. I forgot. Let me go back. I did. Let's see. Uh, no, we actually talked about that. So, um, we should never make decisions without consulting the wisdom of God. And so sometimes people will say, well, how do you know? It's in prayer. It's in, in prayer for his wisdom and guidance in our lives. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer where two or three are gathered. He's present. I think that if you feel lost, I had a friend reach out earlier this week and it was not coincidental. It was Tuesday morning before prayer starts. It says, hey, I need your prayer team to pray for me here. I need my, my faith strength, strengthened. She has amazing faith like i go to her for for stuff and for her to come it was beautiful so then what did our prayer team do we gathered and prayed for her um i think that's something that we we ought to be doing all the time prayer 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 on everything and with one another you help me all the time with that yeah he helps me to pray in public more <laughs> um and we cannot see the whole picture of things without drawing upon the wisdom of god true so we have to be praying for that wisdom all the time. So, anything else? I think so. Yeah. Anyone yeah, there want? used to be a bumper sticker out that said, Jesus is my co-pilot. Mm. I'm thinking, you are so wrong. You need to switch to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is my pilot. He's not your co-pilot. He better be your pilot or you're That's in so trouble. True. <laughs> Although I do have to envision him sitting next to me or walking with me, especially when I'm speaking. Uh, Mary has said that. Pastor Mary's preached on that before. So during this conversation, pull up a chair if you have to and put the chair and that's Jesus. He's there as a visual reminder. And I'm like, that's so smart. I so. saw I saw a cute bumper sticker once in front of me when I was driving. And it said, in case of the rapture, this car will be empty. <laughs> I think, doesn't Maria's license plate say that? Uh, around it, it says that this car is empty. If this car is empty, I've been raptured. <laughs> that has with me. I love it. I love it. Well, um, if no one has anything else, um, I'm going to ask Sharif to pray for us. And if you could just um, add Christina in for a special prayer of, um, yeah, to just be held by the Lord. Um, she's it's been through a lot, as many of us have. And so, um, yeah, just to continue to be held. Because I believe you're being held by the Lord, Christina. And so I'm happy you're, you're with us. I'm happy everyone is with us tonight. Oh, Maria. <laughs> She's on. We talked about you a lot, Marie. Sorry. Or I did. Love you. All right. All right. <laughs> God, we thank you for your word that brings life, life and transformation. God, I pray that the words that we read on tonight, God, just don't fall dormant in our lives, God. But Lord, that we're not just hearers of this word, but we're doers, God. Lord, I pray that we seek your wisdom in all things, oh God, in every situation of our lives, oh God, to seek your wisdom, God. Lord God, I pray that we just continue, oh God, to live holy and acceptable lives, oh God, that's pleasing to you. God, I pray for Christine, oh God. Lord, I pray that you just give her strength. I pray that you give her wisdom, God. God, I pray that you just continue to walk and talk with her, God. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you just surround her, oh God, with uh, believers, oh God, that love you, oh God, and that can just speak into her life, oh God. Lord God, I thank you for all that you've done in our lives, oh God, and all that you're getting ready to do, God. God, I pray that your name be glorified and magnified in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Beautiful. See you guys next week. Sharif and I will be back for the end of chapter seven. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo.